In Leeds, 19-year-old Callum and 17-year-old Karina are in the first flushes of a new relationship. We've been together it was a month on Saturday, so just over a month now. Yeah, early stages. Callum plucked up the courage to ask Karina out one Saturday night at the local park. I had to have several aids with that courage, if you know what I mean. So, uh, what do you mean? It's put a simple at our drunk. He took my hand, led me over to the barriers over there and says, Karina, I might be a little bit drunk, but please will you go out with me? I was like, yeah. Did I say please? <laughs> I don't know. I was like, yeah. Go on then. Callum and Karina have not had sex yet, but Karina lost her virginity in a previous relationship. Thinking back on my first time, I wasn't, I was happy at the time and I don't regret it because I never regret something that made me smile at one point. Callum, however, has not yet found the right person. I'm still a virgin, which a lot of people might, you know, a lot of my mates, the, the mock me. I've never really cared. If it's your first time having sex ever, then I do think it's important for you to have it with, you know, someone who means something to you. It should be quite special. Tonight, Karina is cooking for Callum round at her place. This is the first night we'll spend together. Should be all right. But I think women tend to think, see things like this as a lot more romantic as men do. But I'm not expecting, oh, if you know what I mean, you know, I don't expect to have sex with her tonight, to put it straightforward. You look quite nice, actually. Sure. I just can't really go a day without thinking about him. I get excited when uh, I go to meet him as well, thinking, oh, what, what are we going to do today? What's our little adventure for today? What happened to you? <laughs> Thank you. Do you think about her a lot? Might sound a bit bad if I say I never think about her, but I do think about her, but I'm, I don't, she's not always on my mind. I know a lot of people who, who they'll be going out a week and they'll be deeply, madly in love, <laughs> but I, I've never believed that. I don't think love just happens like that. At the moment, I'd say I'm deeply attracted to her. I like her a lot, but not love. This is like really surreal. What is? I'm eating bacon, chicken and cheese with a glass of pink juice. <laughs> I actually do think I'm falling for him. I know, something, something about him, I think. Have you told him? No, I'm too shy. Most young people start to develop an interest in sex and relationships after puberty. Oh, yeah. Which happens at an average age of 11 for girls and 12 for boys. It is the most tumultuous time in any individual's life. So you've got this extraordinary explosion of hormones in men and women. And it's no surprise that it is associated with some quite radical behaviour. Puberty starts in a part of the brain called the hypothalamus. Messages are sent from here to the testicles in boys and the ovaries in girls, telling these glands to massively increase the production of sex hormones. In males, the main sex hormone is testosterone. In females, it's called estrogen. These hormones are transported around the body in the bloodstream, having been released at significantly greater levels than before puberty. At sites all over the body, the sex hormones dock at receptors, triggering major changes in our appearance and bodily function. In boys, genitals enlarge and sperm is produced for the first time. In girls, hips widen, breasts develop and periods start. As we become fertile, we start to explore sexual opportunities for the first time. Individuals, young men and women, are learning their, about their sexuality and learning what it means to be sexually aroused. In South Wales, a group of lads in their early 20s have all lost their virginity, but they're preparing for a sexual rite of passage of a different kind. Their first pulling holiday abroad. Well, we're off to Kavos and uh, I think everyone, everyone goes to Kavos for one thing, um, sex, drink, or well, two things. Hopefully there'll be plenty of women because uh, the statistics that he's come up with, <laughs> 10 guys to every girl, uh, <laughs> better bring some lube. <laughs> Four of us going on the holiday to Kavos. Um, we have Dan, Richard and Tom, and myself. Richard's the party animal of the group. When he's drunk, he'll do anything, absolutely anything. He'll, he'll use his two-thumb joke that he likes to use. What's got two thumbs, speaks French, and has got a 12-inch penis. <laughs> Moi. <laughs> oh no, but they're, they're always disappointed, obviously, because I can't speak French. So. <laughs> and unfortunately, I haven't been on a lad's holiday uh, abroad yet, so uh, the anticipation is, uh, is killing me, to be honest. Uh, I can't wait. 
tour operators started offering cheap package holidays to young Brits back in the mid-1960s, although it wasn't until the 70s and 80s that these trips became established as a major sexual rite of passage. These days, thousands head out to resorts all over Europe for a week of sun, sea and sex. Plenty of condoms in there? That's all that's in it. One of the aims is to chat the women up and, yeah, if we're lucky, go a little bit further. And we're live. It's been a while, so I want to get my leg off. <laughs> like, I, want a, I want a bit of fun. <laughs> I'm 23 now. I can't really be going on these holidays much longer. I have to get out of my system. I think it'll be uh, epic, I think. Memorable. In Gloucestershire, Andy and Odell have been going out for just under two and a half years and are about to experience a major step forward in their sexual lives. Andy and I are getting married in two days' time um, at the weekend and we have decided and made a decision that to abstain from having sex before our marriage. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. To Adele and Andy are Christian youth workers and met when they were colleagues at the same charity. I'm a committed Christian. That's important to me in terms of the girl I seek. Amen. To have someone who I can marry who's got the same passions, the same goals, the same vision for all that is really important to me. Most of the young people Adele and Andy work with are not Christians and the couple are open with them about their decision to wait until marriage before having sex. Were you scared the first time, boys? Not scared. Were you not? <laughs> no, it wasn't me. Were you not? Everybody's got their own opinion. Well, it's a bit like, it's a bit of a crazy thing, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> for you if you've waited so long, then yeah, fair enough, I suppose it is. But... So there's no sexual activity involved the whole of your 27 years? <laughs> what, do you, what do you call sexual activity? <laughs> what? Bar kissing. There was minimal sexual activity <laughs> prior to us getting married. <laughs> I feel sorry for it now. <laughs> it's so funny the responses that you get. You know, initially they say, well, how old are you? And you say, well, I'm 29. 29? And you're still a virgin? That's ridiculous. When you get married with someone, that's your lifetime partner, isn't it? And then you, like, lose your virginity to them and it's like falling down. But you don't have to wait, do you? It's a choice that you can make. Yeah. Why, why would you want to wait? Why don't you just, like... <laughs> Like, lose it, it and, like, feel the pleasure. <laughs> For me, it was about only having that experience with one person, and so I wanted to make sure that I waited till I was married. It's just natural to lose your virginity at 14 and 15. <laughs> get, pregnant, <laughs> get pregnant by 16. <laughs> the average age boys and girls lose their virginity in the UK is 16. Adele and Andy's pledge to save sex until marriage in their late 20s has even surprised some of their friends. One of my really close girlfriends at the Hendry said, Adele, are you sure you don't want to try before you buy? <laughs> like, are you really sure? So we did, we tried it. No, we didn't. I do think about sex quite a lot. Adele's an attractive girl, so why wouldn't I? And for me, that does excite me, and I think it will actually really enhance the relationship or really strengthen our relationship and love for one another. <laughs> With the ceremony just two days away, however, some nerves about the wedding night are creeping in. You know, for me, I'm slightly nervous about the fact that Andy's going to see me with no clothes on. And as a female, I'm slightly anxious about the fact that I've not got, you know, perfect body and got lumps and bumps in places and nobody's seen that yet. So all of that is new. Nerves before sex are natural, but can lead to physical problems during sex. And often this is down to poor blood flow. In men, when they are sexually stimulated, impulses are sent via the nervous system to the genitals. The nerves going through the penis then release chemicals that widen the blood vessels, which increases blood flow, producing an erection. Nervousness can impair these impulses, causing difficulty getting an erection. In women, there is a similar effect. Normally, sexual stimulation triggers blood flow to the vagina, which causes lubrication to make sex more comfortable. Anxiety can impair this blood flow, meaning the vagina is less lubricated making it more difficult for women to get sexually aroused. Over in Cavos, the lads from South Wales have their own problems to deal with, as their dreams of a sex-fueled holiday in the sun seem a little optimistic. 
definitely nearing the end of the season. Right? The, the end of the season is coming up on this Friday. It is like a wild west shanty town. It's a weird setup. I've never been to anything like this before in my life. It's so different at night. As night falls, the lads are determined to find some girls and get the party started. Nothing can dampen our spirits on, on a good night out. When there's plenty of girls, plenty of alcohol, bit of music, nothing can stop getting in our way. The boys are three days into their holiday and sex has not yet been a major feature. When it comes to kissing girls, however, one member of the group is way out in front. Tell me who's been the most successful so far. <laughs> well, the, I, the most successful I say is myself. <laughs> Met a different girl every night. I think that makes me sound quite bad, actually. Griff's doing great, as per usual. Give a reflection on last night where he's pulled and he's just going back for seconds, I think. He loved a bit of secondary dessert, so to speak. He was trying to find her, her erogenous zones and he couldn't find it. So I had to find it for him, I said it's her neck. If you look, he's kissing her neck all the time. That's it, that is her main erogenous zone. When we kiss, our bodies go into pleasure overdrive. The lips and tongue are packed with nerve endings that are incredibly sensitive to stimulation. This sparks the release of the feel-good chemical dopamine by nerve cells in the pleasure centers of the brain. When dopamine attaches to receptors on neighboring nerve cells, it triggers feelings of euphoria and excitement all over the body. Some scientists believe kissing could be about much more than a fleeting moment of passionate pleasure. As more kissing leads to more release of other chemicals, such as the hormone oxytocin, which further stimulates bonding and desire between couples. So, as soon as that kiss happens, your buzz definitely heightens and you really feel a good adrenaline kick. It's definitely something that's just sparks, I think, in the back of your mind. There's always that buzz where you're thinking, yes, here we go, job done. <laughs> it is a bit of a holiday romance, and I'm, I'm sort of getting to like that. <laughs> He's a very open person, and I'm a, I'm a flirty person anyway, so we ended up just like flirting and giving a lot of banter to each other, and then things happen from there. Well, as you can see, then the night's gone pretty well, I think. <laughs> I think we can only really make it, I think. <laughs>